Welcome back to Mad Outdoor Adventures. Today I'm going to be doing a full walkthrough of my restored low 1605 fishing boat, the fish dish. Stay tuned. Welcome to Mad Outdoor Adventures, where we'll be in the woods or on the water with our family and friends. Let's find an adventure. Alright guys, so the boat was restored. The boat work was completed. Trailer was upgraded. If you haven't watched those videos, go watch those videos. I appreciate it. So now what I'm going to do is give you a walkthrough of the entire boat. Show you everything I've done, how things work. Alright, so we'll start with the outside of the boat. Alright, let's going to start up front. So, as in the trailer video, you saw me upgrade the trailer. Blue everything. Right, new wheel, new actual tires, new winch, new rollers, spray paint, new lights on the sides and the backs, new guide-ons here, the lights up top. Now these lights up top are nice because it, the lights up here, you can see it better. It looks cool. However, I can honestly say I would not recommend these now. Um, on the way Right after I did this, this whole thing popped off. The instructions say to put one screw in it, but it popped off anyway, so I put another one in it. Now, this one, this light just keeps popping right out. Like it, this whole thing pops out and then it swings by the wires. The wires actually broke with it swinging, so I have to fix that. I would not recommend those. Okay, so keep going. New lights on the back here. Obviously, I got my transducer. I got one underwater light there, another underwater light right here. I got a boarding ladder, it's a three step telescoping ladder here. It does hit this, I kind of like that though because then as I'm going down the water, like it ain't gonna pop open on me. It does take some push and pull to get it up. Sorry about the wind too, I'll try to edit that noise out. I got a metal license plate holder so it doesn't snap. I got the other guide on. So the outside of the boat, exterior, still the good old 1997 low fishing boat colors. Um, I didn't do anything with that yet, maybe next year, to be honest with you. I don't know what I want to do with it yet. I don't know if I want to make it like a like a sweet color pattern or just like paint it camo. So that way I can try to multi-purpose this boat. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But as you saw in that work video, I had to buck these rivets. I put 5200 on it. 5200, you can see it there. It's not the prettiest on the outside, but it's what's on the inside that counts, right? So I'm going to get in the boat and show you around in there. So I guess I'll start in the front of the boat. First thing here is I have this Motor Guide XI3 trawl motor. This trawl motor is a lifesaver. None of my fishing videos would have been possible without it. Spot lock. Uh, we used it to troll, get close to the shore so we could bass fish. I have a ram mount trolling motor holder so that way when I'm going up and down the highway there's not a whole lot of balance so that it can't break. I got a real cheap drawstring cord on it <clears throat> to put it up and down. On the sides here I have two rail blazer rod holder mounts so I can put two rod holders off to the sides. I have this receptacle here for my nav light. This is also where I put my Tacticam YOLO sticks or whatever in there to film the fishing. So I have a Lowrance hook, 7 triple shot. This is the original hook. This is not the new version. I have that up front here. That is mounted onto my trolling motor with the Russell Marine Products triple scan trolling motor mount. 
I highly suggest you get this mount if you're going to do this. I had issues with the other one where it just snapped off and broke. So, and I got cleats that I put on here. I need to tie off up front here. The trolling motor plug. Ain't right, nothing under there except for wires. This front storage box here. Probably has water in it because it's been raining like a mug here. But anchor, <clears throat> life jackets, safety gear, etc. Floors are all brand new vinyl. I have three Bass Pro fishing seats here. Nice high backs, very comfortable. Screw and pedestals. I suggest you get the screw in if you're going to do this yourself. I have a cup holder up here. So now the plastic like cover broke off of that. That's fine because the drink can sit on the floor here. So I don't really need it. Here's my storage box. It's where I put all my lures that I'm going to use that day. Another thing up front that I did not show you is I made custom tool holders. Basically just cut slots so that way it holds the tools like that. So when I'm fishing up front, it's real convenient. Sorry, I don't have a cameraman or a camera woman with me. So this is all self-filming. Hopefully it's not too terrible. I then have the name of the boat, the fish dish. You may be asking why the fish dish. So all my life, I've been a walleye fisherman. I've always wanted a boat with the name Eye Catcher um, because hopefully it would have been a nice looking boat and I catch walleye out of it, right? Or like eye candy or something like that. But my son, when he was probably two, three, just learning how to talk, when we talk about going fishing, he'd always be like, we need to catch fish for a fish dish. So I was like, you know what? I'm naming the boat the fish dish. There it is. The fish dish. We got a fish on a plate. That fish doesn't look the most appetizing, but it's cool looking. We got a net holder here. It has tool holders on the side, so you can put your pliers, things in there. Two other seats. Here's the live wheel. All right. I riveted a 40 inch ruler on top so we can measure it real quick. In the live well, I have a light so that way for fishing at night we can see what's in here. And then my wife, with her cricket, also made this for me along with the boat name. So in Michigan here we have a master angler program. These are all the sizes of fish that you have to catch in order to be considered for a master angler certificate. That way I don't have to look it up on my phone. It's just right there. And as you can see, the main dog is in bold walleye. So over here to the console, I have a JBL clip, Bluetooth speaker. I don't listen to music a lot on the water, to be honest with you. I don't know if it scares the fish or... I just think it scares the fish, but if we're just cruising around, I listen to music. I have a ram mount X grip to put your cell phone. I am going to have to figure out a different mount for a VHF radio, but because that one doesn't quite hold it right, but it does hold your cell phone nicely. Over here, I have the Lowrance hook reveal. So this is the new one, but this is only the split shot reason why I got the split shot here is with that long tra transducer my Rottweiler likes to run into my boat and break it off and I'm not paying $150 constantly for new transducers I have a switch here so the switch has a 12 volt it's got USB and it's got a cigarette lighter that I don't even have hooked up because I didn't need it or run it a voltage rating and then we have the horn, the bilge pump, navigation lights up front, anchor light, live well, live well light, underwater lights, and then interior lights. I'll show you these here. When I 
turn the switches on. Obviously the steering wheel, up, the throttle, ignition. Underneath we have all my beautiful wiring. All right. The interior lights go all the way around. Back here, fire extinguisher. And then we have two cup holders on either side. We have our rod holders. These things are amazing. Great for trolling. I also put the rods in it as I'm going down the water. As this boat is obviously not big enough for a rod locker, it, uh, it does pretty well. I have a 12 gallon gas tank. I have a three batteries one starting one house and one trolling I have an onboard battery charger as well as three switches that onboard battery charger goes up here and then you can just open this up hook an extension cord to it it starts charging your batteries I'll show you that in a minute but what I'm gonna do is turn these switches on now these switches can be a pain to get to Unfortunately, that's what you deal with when you have a small boat. But, you know what? I don't have to turn the back one on because I don't have to start the motor right now. But, it works, obviously, as you saw me fishing already. And then this one is just, you flip this up and then the trolling motor gets power. So with the switches, there they all lit up. Unfortunately, the bilge pump from day one did not light up. That's aggravating, but it's going to do everything works so I'll hit this you can see the interior lights turn on the underwater lights are on the back and then the live well light is right there now the interior lights I do have lights under there as well as in both boxes the safety box up front and my lure box in case you need to find lures at night. Alright, live well turns on, the lights, the bilge pump turns on, and then the horn. Everything works. I'm going to show you this at night, so here's that clip now. Alright guys, as promised, I'm going to show you the boat here at night. So you can see the light feature is better so there's the switch like I said earlier this one the LED doesn't work the wires are all wired right it's all connected it just won't turn on the top one does turn on and turn that on though so I don't know it's a little aggravating but after all the work and time and stuff I'm not gonna give a mess with it what I mainly want to show you out here is I'm going to turn on my anchor light. As you can see, that works. And then turn on my nav light. You can see up there, it's shining. Alright, now we're going to get into the cool lights. It's the live bulb light. I'm go over here. You can see it peeking through. Oh, I lift this up. Got a light bulb light. switch panel here the next light is the underwater lights this is going to be awesome this is probably one of my favorite things that I did all that light in the water lights up the entire back of the boat it's going to attract microorganisms that attract bait fish that hopefully attract larger fish, crappie fishing, walleye fishing, should be a blast. And the last thing is the interior lights. 
So look at that. I got them under the console so I can see all the wiring and everything if I need to. All the way across the back or the sides. I got lights under there. So that way I can see the gas tank and the batteries. So we got lights in this compartment. So you can see the doors you're getting. And I also have lights in the safety compartment here. I'm try to reach over and open this real quick. Sorry about the bad camera angles there. But that way gotta get into the safety stuff, the anchor, life jackets, flares, etc, etc. It's all there. So that's what I want to show you at night. I think it's pretty cool. I love the lights. I don't know why, but I just do. The last thing I really have to show you is the onboard battery charger, how that works, if you don't know. So I'm going to turn this switch off again. Like I said, it's a pain, but luckily, I have a son who's got small arms and he's real good at turning switches on. Obviously, the boat wouldn't run without the 40 horse Johnson. And then I want to show you how that onboard battery charger works. So, if I take this extension cord that I conveniently already had plugged into the house magic right plug that guy in here once you do that it gives it power to the onboard battery charger it's a three bank charger so I charge all three batteries you'll see it will start going you see how those lights are red over there and as it starts charging it gives you a progress with a green bar that keeps going Let's see if that does that here in a minute. So now you'll see that it started running for a little bit. You'll see those green lights going. It's telling you it's charging. And then you'll see the red light go through the bars. So that trolling motor is on the second bar. So that one's more dead than the rest. Oh, it just went to the third. That thing and the trolling motor is probably the best thing on this boat. As far as functionality goes. As far as usefulness. As far as coolness, probably the interior lights and the underwater lights, but I think it's a bad, bad little fishing boat, and I'm glad that I restored it, and I get to spend time on the water with my family and friends. So that is the full walkthrough of my low 1605 fishing boat, the fish dish. If you like today's video, give me that thumbs up. If you haven't done so already please subscribe to our channel we have a lot more outdoor content coming your way as always thanks for watching and i'll find you on the next adventure